Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to talk about CSS opacity. CSS opacity or opacity, you're going to hear it both ways, um, is the element or the sorry the property that is going to define the, uh, the degree of transparency of any element. So it is basically responsible for making something some element transparent. I'm going to add an image here and I'm going to provide it with a source which is dog.jpg. I'm going to provide it with a paragraph as well. Let's just save that lorem whatever. There we go. So we have our image. First off, I'm going to uh, okay so I'm going to grab our image and I'm going to just provide it with some height and width so it is like visible so we can work with it I'm going to say height should be uh, 500 pixels pixels and width should be let's say four uh, no width should be like 600 pixels and you can see now this image is squished that's why it's like uh, a little bit elongated towards the top and the bottom uh, it means that the aspect ratio of the image basically goes away whenever you provide it with specific dimensions of your own. That's why there is an, a property, there is a property that you can use to fix this issue of like either squishing or stretching the uh, images. So if you just provide here object fit to cover, cover and contain work in the same way as for uh, backgrounds which we have discussed before. So they're basically, they say the same thing. So if I save that, now you can see that the uh, you're going to lose some parts of the image, but in return, the aspect ratio is going to be perfect. And I'm going to show you an example of when an image is stretched. So this is squished. This could be, this is, this is not stretched. Let me just decrease the height to 300. This is stretched. So you can see this is stretched like pulling from the sides and the other one was squished like pulling from the top top and bottom save that there we go so this is our image now let's say you you want to provide a hover effect on this image what does that mean it means that whenever you're hovering on this image the image changes something so for this to actually work and to see that it is actually working I'm gonna grab the body and I'm gonna provide it with a background image as well so background image so you can see the image behind this image that's the whole idea of opacity so I'm gonna say cars the JPEG there we go so you can see wherever this image is you, you can't see the behind of this image but if you provide it with opacity uh, uh, the smallest value is 0, the highest value is 1, which is the default. All HTML elements by default are, f are fully not transparent, whatever is the opposite of transparent. They're fully block. Uh, so if you provide it with 1 and save it, nothing changes. But if you use provide it with uh, 0 0.7, what does that mean? It means it is going to be transparent by 30%. So if you save it, uh, I'm not sure uh, so if you hover on it you can see that you can see the behind of this picture I'm gonna set it to 0.2 so you can really see that so if I hover on it there we go you can see the behind of this image right there we go so this is CSS opacity it's it not only is here but we do have it in our colors as well so if I grab that paragraph that element and if I set it to color white padding uh, 25 pixel font size uh, 30 pixels let's save that so you can see that this is our paragraph right and I'm gonna give it a background color I'm gonna give it a background color of white and I'm gonna change the color of the text to black let's save that so you can see this background color for this box this is fully not transparent. This is like block. You can you can't see behind of it. But if you hover on this color and if you click on this RGB, you can see that we have RGB. What is the color white? The code, the RGB code for color white. It is two two fifty five two fifty five two fifty five. But there is actually another letter that you can add here, and that is A. It means alpha that that's represents the alpha channel of any block 
or any box that we have in CSS. What is the alpha channel? The alpha channel manipulates the transparency of any image, any box, anything that is. So, and for this A, you're going to add another comma in here, and you're going to provide the values. So the values are going to start from zero and going to go to one. So if you provide one, that is the default, so nothing changes. The default values basically mean that if you provide them, they're not going to change. You have to, uh, I want you to remember something whenever you're working with HTML and CSS, because um, I believe this is something that is not um, said at all when it comes to HTML and CSS tutorials online. And this is one of the very, very, very fundamental things that you need to keep in mind whenever you're working with CSS and it comes from the browser. You, whenever you're working on an HTML page and you create elements, the browser is going to provide styles for that element. All the styles, all the possible styles that you can think of. What you are doing as a developer when you're writing CSS styles is changing those browser default styles. Keep this in mind. This is very fundamental. This is very important. That's why when you provide some style which uh, is the same thing as the browser default, there is no change for that element in that web page. And you're going to say, okay, why is it not being applied? I, did, I just applied it. It is not being applied because you just provided it with the default value. Where is all the styles for a specific element? I, I think I've already shown you. I'm going to show it to you again. So if you just bring this uh, inspector up and uh, I'm going to I'm going to dock it. So it is right here. Like uh, docking basically means it's a standalone window. So let's select an, a paragraph. Let's bring this over here. Whenever you go to compute it, you just click on the show all. This is all the styles which are applied on this paragraph. Uh, what you are actually trying to do is you are trying to change these styles. Now, even though we have not added any flex rules in here, you can see we have flex basis, flex direction, flex grow. We have grid row, grid template. These are alignment styles. But you have to keep this in mind that all the CSS styles that you can think of for any CSS element they will be applied by default by the user. Sorry, by the user, by the browser. And what you are doing as a CSS developer is changing those default styles. So if you're trying to add any style and it doesn't change, it doesn't affect, make sure to come and check it in here. Because you might have just provided the default. That is why it's not changing. That is why when I say uh, background color RGBA and set the A to 1, it doesn't change because I've just tr I'm just trying to re-declare uh, the default. 1 is default. If you change it from 1, then that is something that is going to take effect. Like what? Like if I set it to 0 0.5. Save that. And now you can see it is a little bit transparent. How do you know it is transparent? Because the background can be seen through. How can we make sure that it is being seen? So I'm just going to set it to 0 0.1 and come here. And now you can see, you can see the background. Basically, I've reduced the transparency for this background color. This is something that I truly believe is missed from, uh, is missed a lot from CSS tutorials and it really pains me that these important concepts are not being taught to all of you. And uh, if you want to become a CSS developer front-end web developer, which is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and some sort of framework for that matter, then um, just one side note, front-end is very high in demand, very high salaries, like it's a very cool job, it's very visual, uh, as opposed to these back-end services such as Python. Python is very relevant. It's considered even the most important and popular. It's like um, um, in competition with JavaScript. So, but this front-end stuff, this is very cool, very visual. 
Some people really love this, that you can see your results in the browser right away. We're just saying control S. And whenever you're trying to do that, whenever you want to become a developer, a front-end developer, you have to know the technologies that you're working with. And I'm going to take like uh, almost 20 to 30 seconds to talk about my own experience in this regard. That when I started learning web development, I didn't have a tutor like myself to tell me that this is the th these are the stuff that you need to be really focusing on. So when it comes to CSS, you have two of the most fundamental things that you need to keep in mind. One is the first and foremost important thing is the CSS box model. You will never become a CSS developer if you do not master box model. The second thing is CSS specificity. CSS specificity refers to which rule applies if there are contradicting rules. I think I have um, covered uh, in one, of, I think in the, um, I, I'm not sure, I don't think I've actually covered CSS. Oh, in this chapter, we are going to talk about CSS specificity, so you don't really need to worry about it. I have, um, uh, it's going to be lecture number five, so the lecture after the next one. We are going to talk about CSS specificity. And whenever you're working with CSS, you have to know CSS, that you are not the only one who is applying CSS styles. The browser who is responsible for showing CSS styles for HTML elements is already doing it. You are basically changing those. So in, in fact, you are not creating properties. You're not creating declaration blocks. You're just manipulating them. You have to keep that in mind, that you are in charge as much as a manipulator and that's it so that you have to keep this in mind that what what a technology allows you to do and what is the scope of a technology this is the scope of css css one of the is one of the most powerful languages that i've ever worked with i say that it is in in category with javascript with python it is very very large very powerful there is nothing on the internet that you can do, that you can see and you cannot do it with CSS. CSS is extremely powerful if you know your way around it. If you know what is its capabilities, where is its, where does its scope lie in? So you have to know that. You have to know that CSS is provided to you by default. You're basically manipulating those values. Those values may be one, maybe zero, but you're still manipulating them. You have to keep that in mind. And as important as CSS is, whenever you're creating websites, HTML is even more important. Why? Because the structure of your HTML page defines the structure of your website. If you do not structure it well, CSS is going to become a nightmare. You will never be able to create a responsive, cool-looking website. That is why I'm emphasizing on the fact that I do have a bestseller course on Udemy that you have to check out. If you want to become a developer, go ahead, check that out. There is a 30-day money-back guarantee. There is nothing to lose there, right? Go ahead, check it out. It's the modern CSS. It's the modern Flexbox Grid SaaS and Animations Developer course. Very high. It is. It starts from intermediate CSS to advanced and expert. There is a lot of cool stuff. There is more than 40 hours of content. So you're going to master CSS. I'm going to move on from this topic. We are talking about CSS uh, opacity. So we do have a uh, opacity property, but we can change the opacity for colors through a uh, through the alpha channel in, in uh, color codes as well. So you can find it in the RGBA. You can find it in the HSLA. Here, there is another A. You can also find it in the uh, hexadecimal code, which doesn't really make that much of a sense. So hexadecimal, it has six digits, hexagon, six. Uh, but for, R, for RGBA, it's going to have, for the A part, it's going to have that one, that two extra uh, like letters. So you're going to end up with eight. And what is eight? It's octagonal. I think it is octagonal. If I'm not right, then I'm sure you are going to know that it is something with eight sites. So with this, our lecture comes to an end. See you in the next one.